Um, I hope you're doing well today. Um, this sermon is called Smoke Screen. Uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you and I lift you up and I, I submit myself to you now, Lord, for what you're going to speak to me and speak through me. God, I pray that every heart will be open, oh God, to receive your word, not because of me, but because of you and how good you are, Lord God. Let your spirit spirit permeate our souls, our hearts, our desires. Open our ears to listen, mine included, to what you have to say. God, I know that you have something dynamic to say today. Um, help me do this thing right. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. Uh, this week, my sermon title is Smoke Screen. Um, it's, I used to love to watch David Copperfield. I don't know if you guys remember David Copperfield. If you don't, David Copperfield is what's called an illusionist. He works um, his specialty... Uh, for doing magic is optical illusion. So, basically, an optical illusion is when you do something and something else is, um, but it looks like something else. You do one thing, but it looks like something else. Um, like, I don't know if you've ever seen the magic trick where they um, put the person in a box and they saw, they saw the person in half. That is called an optical illusion. And David Copperfield was famous for optical illusions. Um, he just was famous for them. He has so many of them. I can't remember the, any specifically right now, but I remember being amazed by them. Like, how he used to do these elaborate optical illusions. And you would think that he would start with one thing, but, and you would think that, that other thing is going on. He would start with one thing and it would look like another. It was so amazing for the eye. It was really just amazing. Um, and I was thinking of um, the pandemic and all these fears and all these things that are going on and conspiracy theories and all of that and all the fear that's gripping people about um, everything from food shortages to um, not having enough vaccine or not wanting to get vaccinated, not wanting to, you know, you know, whatever. There's so many things going on, and that's not my purpose today to catalog them, but I was thinking of this t today, um, through the week, and I was asking the Lord, what do you really want us to see? Um, and he said, um, I want, I want you to understand that what pe what Christians think is happening and what is really happening is two different things. Uh, most Christians, because of what we've been told and because of our interpretation of scripture and because of uh, what the Bible says, think that this is the end of something. 
Um, and I'm not saying that Jesus is not coming back. He certainly is. I'm not saying that the, that the rapture is not hap going to happen one day. It certainly is. Um, because God is always a God of his word. But as I, as I began to really listen to the Lord and, and look around, he said, he said, he said, in this time, uh, the body of Christ is so scattered that they're not looking at the uh, bigger picture. He said they think it's all going to end tonight. And this is this is all oh, this is all a sign of Jesus' coming. But um, what the Lord said to me is, it's a. He said, um, he said, um, he says it's all these things that are being said and whatever about the virus and about um, what what I mentioned before. He says it's all. A smoke screen. He said he's he he said he's working on our behalf. He said it's it's all a smoke screen. We see we see one thing, we think one thing, but it is going to be another. This this is not a time for doomsday or time to be afraid or time to be fearful and start going crazy. He said, this is a time for the church to come together for such a weight of glory that he was to produce in the earth. Um, he said, the weight of glory that, I, that I'm going to produce in the earth is going to be remarkable. And he said, um, uh, that he did, I, I don't know uh, about the Lord and the virus or whatever, how that got started, but he said he's using the, the virus to bring, to bring people together, to bring order to the world, um, and he even talked to me about medical science, he said, what, he said, what scientists are figuring out uh, with coronavirus, uh, with COVID-19, is going to bring um, answers that uh, people have been looking for for years for other diseases, like certain cancers, like Parkinson's, like ALS, like all these different diseases. So coronavirus in so many ways he said is going to be the seed of all this wonderful glory that will hit the hit the world and it's not going to be just kind of a spiritual uh, glory it's going to be a glory that uh, will hit medical science will cause people to be more innovative because when I look at uh, coronavirus although it is devastating it is harmful it is just um, devastated the world when I look past that though when I look past uh, the smoke screen of it I see um, everything that's come out of it I see people being innovative I see people starting businesses, people getting up out of their lackadaisical sense of, uh, this is how my life is, la-di-da, to just taking an active part in their lives. I see, so, I've heard so many stories of people starting businesses when they were home alone, of people uh, doing certain things and just wonderful stories 
along with the horrifying stories. He said, the Lord is saying right now, he's saying, look beyond the smoke screen, look beyond the negative, look beyond the, oh, Jesus is coming, we need to get ready now, uh, to what is happening, to what is hitting the world. It's going to be a, it, it is already a greater, uh, he said, it's going to, he said, coronavirus is going to set the church up for a greater weight of glory than we've ever seen. So he said, coronavirus is going to set the church up, yes, Lord, for a greater weight, for a greater weight of glory than we've ever seen. Um... When I think back in history, every major challenge in history, whether World, World War One, World War Two, uh, all the all the wars that have happened, everything, every war that we've gone through in human history has changed the fabric. After World War One uh, was the in was the industrial, um, act, actually, after World War II, I believe, was the industrial re um, revolution, and, because these women had to go, these women who were at home now had to go to work because their men were at war, and it changed the fabric of everything, uh, Coronavirus is devastating and as horrible as it is. Um, I believe it is designed to change the fabric of society in the best way. It is not gloom and doom, and it is not time for fear. It is time for a greater measure of faith. And he said, the the uh, future of the church is very bright. He said the future of the church is very bright. Um, all, like the body of Christ now is going through so much personally, um, uh, politically. The body of Christ now is going through so much. And in that going through, though, I, God is working things out for our good. So not not everything that is going on r right now is good, but He's working it out for our good. He's putting the I sense that He's it's like a puzzle. He's putting puzzle pieces together, like fitting them in the right place. Have you ever did, have you ever done those puzzles where you have to put the pieces in the right place and they're like 300 pieces in, and you're like putting them in the right place? Sometimes it takes a few tries until you get it. And the the Lord is 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 not um, like us. It doesn't take a few tries for him to get it, but he is putting all these puzzle pieces into place to create a greater, bigger picture. I really sense that, and I know you can't really say what the Lord is doing, but I really sense it. It's going to be greater. It's going to be, be better. Like, I really sense it so strongly. I don't know in all the ways where it's going to be greater and better, but I, but I know in medical science, but I sense one of the ways it's going to be greater and better, it's in uh, the medical science. It's even in the um, fi finances, it's going to be, uh, people are going to come up with strategy 
that won't change the trajectory of the world. Medical science is going to come up with um, with uh, um, things that will not only help coronavirus, but that it'll help the seeds of it will help uh, di uh, different diseases, certain cancers, uh, certain neuro neurological diseases, and the thing we have to look for is um, the church should be bright. It's going to be a brighter day. It's, it's not the time to be fearful and be sad and start start going crazy in our minds. It's the time to look for God to do something that he's never done before. We have never experienced something like this before. Um, um, where the whole world is experiencing it. Every country in its own way is experiencing um, COVID-19. And I think it's because it's God's getting ready to show off his glory like never before. And he's getting ready to do something that he's never done before. That's why everything is being shaken because he, I really sense that he is getting ready to do something that he's never done before. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm excited. I'm excited to to really to really um, be here to to experience a greater way of way of glory than what we've ever seen before. Uh, remember a few minutes ago where I said every major time in history after that time has changed the whole world, but no has changed that portion of uh, history. Um, so if every greater time in history has changed the whole time in history, could you could you imagine what God is working on be behind the smoke screen, um, behind the distraction, behind the fear? He's working on something wonderful. He's the future of the church is very bright. We just need to uh, take the limits off. Understand that this is a different day in history. That this is a different time and God is getting ready to reveal himself in a way that he's never revealed himself before. And we, we just need to understand that there, it's no, not a time to be fearful. The way is gr growing bright. And we need to um, be, we need to rejo rejoice, not for suffering, but in it, because we know that God has a plan. I know, I know it's very difficult right now. I know it's extremely difficult. It's been very trying for a lot of people, for everybody. There is no person that hasn't been uh, affected by this virus, um, but um, whether it be whether it be medically, whether it be financially, whether it be socially, whether it be whatever, but but with that, God is going to show off His glory like never before. I I honestly believe too that in this God is trying to make his church one. His bride, he's trying to 
do what he what he prayed in in uh, John seventeen. He did uh, that they may be one. We've been divided as the church for too long over stupidness, and it's and he's shifting things for us to become one. And uh, because I was talking, I was talking to the Lord, and I thought, uh, why are all all these um. Why are all these well-known preachers friends like that? They they talk on the phone regularly and and they're friends. And he said, "Why did you cause them all to be friends? There's no competition between them. There's just love." He says, he said to me, "Well, that's because I'm I am making my church my bride one." He said, he said, and I said, wow. He said, re he said, the strategy that is going to come out of these friendships with these uh, well-known preachers is going to be the start of what I'm going to do with my church, with my bride. He's like, I'm going to fix her. She's been, she's been wayward for a long time. But I am going to fix it up. So that's what he is doing. That's why all these uh, churches and preachers are falling. Because he's just fixing things up. Putting all the puzzle pieces together. Uh, he's separating the men from the boys and the women from the girls. And he's just putting things together to be it's going to be a greater weight of glory than we've ever seen before how do i know that because i sense it i sense it and i'm just excited about what the lord is going to do and what he's already doing in individual lives and in his body corporately. We just need to be open because in this though, he's going to cause us to do things differently. He's going to uh, bring about different uh, ways of worship, different ways of preaching, like I said before. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be different, but it's still going to be his word. He's not going to, I sense he's not going to do things like he, like we think he's always done them. Um, he's going to bring strategy. He's going to bring new sound. He's going to bring, it's going to be so, he's, he's flipping things upside down uh, to create something wonderful to create something new. He's saying, be of good cheer. I'm on the throne. I'm on the throne. And he said, whatever is going on, know that I still am God. He said, know that I am still for my bride. I am still for my people. He said, he said, know that I am for you. He said, no matter what is going on, look beyond the smoke screen and see the glory behind the smoke screen. He's like, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter who you lose, no matter what job you lose, I am still God and I will still be God. And there'll be no, no weapon that will form against you that will prosper. He said, I will look out for my children. Uh, he said, I will teach you how to prepare. I will teach you how to put things together. I will teach you how to how to do what I need you to do for this next level. He said, I will teach you and you will and you will grow from this. He said, there's no need to be fearful and there's no need to uh, start uh freaking out or whatever he's saying 
God is still God, and he will always be God. And he's saying uh, preparation is different than panic. He was talking to me about preparation versus panic. Uh, preparation is getting things re ready in a calm way um, so that you are prepared for what he's going to do. Panic is just get, getting things in a jumble because you think that, oh, what if this happens? I got to get this ready. He said, there's no power in a panic. He said, there's power in praise and preparation. He said he's looking for praise and preparation. He's not looking for panic. Because at the end of the day, panic doesn't help things. It just gets you stressed out and worry and fearful. And, and those emotions, stress, worry, and fear are from the devil. And he said that, he said, don't panic. He said, praise and prepare. That's what the Lord says. And prepare to see his glory in a way that you've never seen it before. Thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate you. I love coming on here every day and preaching every week and, and preaching to you. It's the joy of my life. It is really phenomenal to do that. I, I love that God has enabled me and ordained me to do it. Um, I really am grateful to you guys and for just sticking with me and just, um, just encouraging me in my ministry and oh, what God has put in, in me and Lord, ah, uh, thank you. Ah. Uh, Lord, I bless you. Lord, I give you praise. I give you worship. I give you honor, Lord God. You deserve the praise and all the worship. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I my hands in worship uh, as I bless your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Lord I lift my hands in worship Lord, I lift my hands in praise, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. Like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no
in them the glory and the honor for I lift my hands and worship for I lift my hands in praise for you are great you do me so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great. Dear God, we, we thank you and we praise you for just being who you are in our lives. Shape us, make us, teach us, and make us ready for whatever you have coming. God, I, I thank you for your greater weight of glory through this situation that you, that, that you have coming. God, I know that you're putting these puzzle pieces together and I thank you for it in the name of Jesus Amen the greatest puzzle piece that you can get started with remember I said He's putting all these puzzle pieces together. Uh, um, uh, he, sa he said, the greatest puzzle piece that you can have in your puzzle is a relationship with him. The Lord said in his word that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Uh, what I tell people is just pour out your heart to the Lord and tell him how much you need him because um, he wants to hear you he wants to hear your heart he wants to hear what's in your mind and your spirit and after you do that if you need help uh, me you can message me and I'll be happy to help you Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O oh, Prince of Peace, for that is what I long to do, and I give you praise, for you are my right. Just I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. 
presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. There's such a sweet spirit in this little office. I, I can keep going all day. I I only meant to, to do one song to sign off, but the Lord had other plans. Ah, so guys, I will see you next week. Bye. Let me see. Let it overflow, 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 let it overflow. No, let it over. No, he's saying that this week, for every circumstances or or the issues that you have, he said, let his presence overflow into that problem. Many of you have been carrying weights and you've been carrying it by yourself, and and he says to you. Let it overflow. Let let praise overflow in that issue in those finances. Even if you don't feel like um, praising, even if you don't feel like lifting your hands this week, he said, "Do it." Um, because even now, as I was worshiping and singing to the Lord. In my mind, I was like, "Oh, I need to, I need to give to the church I attend online right now. I can't wait." Or all these things that are coming to my mind. What I did was push through, and he said, "What you need to do is push through and let praise overflow into that circumstance. Don't keep praise for a Sunday morning." Use praise as a weapon to overflow and change your circumstance. What praise does is change a perspective. And he needs your perspective to change on that circumstance. He needs you to gain his spirit, his eyes, reflect him in that circumstance. So in order to do that, you just need to let it play. Praise overflow into your daily life, into your circumstance, into your every day. And that's what he wants to happen. He wants to overflow into all your decisions, into your financial decisions, into your medical decisions, even into your leisure decisions. He wants to overflow into those decisions because... The only person who can show you 
uh, what's behind the smoke screen is him. And he won't always show you what's behind the smoke screen, but um, because his plan for you, uh, maybe not to know, because if you do know, you might run or think it's too big for you. But his plan may be to show, to give you a peek behind the smoke screen. He hasn't told me all, all that is behind the smoke screen, but he has given me peeks uh, because I've let uh, praise overflow. He's like, don't keep praise for Sunday morning. Let it overflow and change your circumstance. Uh, pr praise doesn't change the circumstance. It changes the most important thing about your circumstance, which is perspective. What praise does is it changes your perspective. It lifts the weight. Like, to just say, thank you, Lord. And you don't need to be all churchy about it. You don't even need to use church language. Um, even if you can just say, thanks, God, for that, or whatever. Acknowledge what he did for you. Like, thanks, God, for waking me up in the morning. Um, he he doesn't care so much about the language, but the heart behind the language. He wants your worship to be genuine to you. And that's what he's really saying um, today. So, thank you guys for, for joining me today. Take care. Let it overflow. 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 In your circumstance, let it all flow. Bye, guys. See you later. Oh, I went for almost an hour today. How long? But the Lord had so much to say today. And I'm, I'm just glad he used me to say it. Let it overflow, let it overflow in your circumstance. Let praise overflow, let it overflow, let it overflow in your circumstance. Let it all 
he's saying for some of you in those relationships that you're having prob problems with, let his presence and his praise overflow. Because his spirit will give you wisdom for it to handle that circumstance. And he's saying just let it overflow. Let the love of God, let the peace of God, let the spirit of God be with you this week and let let him overflow on, on you in every situation. And he wants you to know that he's with you and he loves you and he's for you. Bye, guys. For real this time. I'll see you soon. Take care. Let it overflow. Let it overflow when your circumstance. Let it overflow. 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 Having the Spirit of God in your circumstance will make it easier to deal with that person. It will give you strategy to deal with that person. And he's saying let, let praise overflow. Let his presence overflow. Let love overflow in that circumstance that you're having trouble with. He said the reason that you're having trouble with it is you refuse to let his spirit come and dwell in that circumstance with you. You want to do it on your own, but he said that will not work. You need his presence. You need his power. You need your spirit. You need his spirit, rather, not for just Sunday morning, but through through the week, through every circumstance. And he's saying, let it overflow.